The Raiders' second string, the Raiders' backups, were able to straight work the starters of the Patriots in this preseason game. You saw Tashawn Bauer, the edge rusher, really go off and get two sacks during this game. Luke Masterson, the middle linebacker who's wearing the green dot, getting the plays through Patrick Graham, made an amazing interception. But I want you to take a look here and see how Tashawn Bauer helps cause this interception, attempting to rush the quarterback, take on the tight end, and then he notices the running back, backs up, and makes sure that he blankets him in coverage, allowing Mac Jones to make the horrible decision, throwing that ball straight to Luke Masterson. We are going to go through all the positions and all the takeaways from this preseason game and what this can possibly mean for the 53-man roster. So the clear stars on defense have been Malcolm Kuntz and Tashawn Bauer. Malcolm Kuntz getting two sacks so far in preseason, one sack in this game, and then you have Tashawn Bauer. Four sacks through all of preseason, and two of them came in this game. And you saw a lot of the backups play the majority of the time in this game. You saw no Jonathan Abram, no Trayvon Mary, no Divine Diablo. In a couple games, you saw some starters get nine snaps or so on defense, but not today. It was straight up backups. Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler trying to figure out what they have on the bottom half of this roster. And Isaiah Pulamau played the majority of snaps at strong safety, picking up four tackles there. When you're looking at really the backup linebacker position, that's a huge conversation that has to be had after watching this game. You're taking a look at Luke Masterson, you're taking a look at Curtis Bolton, and you're taking a look at Darren Butler, and you're trying to see who's performed the best. And I think Darian Butler and Luke Masterson clearly have popped. However, I feel like Curtis Bolton came on a little later at that linebacker position and didn't get enough snaps throughout preseason compared to the others. But if I had to choose somebody who's going to make this team at the backup linebacker position, I'm going to give it to Luke uh, and, and Darian Butler there. Tay Davis, the recently signed linebacker, was able to get some snaps towards the end of the game, but not too much. Another thing that's important about this game is the backup edge rusher position. We talked about Kuntz and Bauer. We saw a little bit of Farrell in this game. Cleland Farrell, the former fourth overall pick. However, he did not play too many snaps compared to Bauer, compared to Kuntz, and he still seems like he's recovering from an injury that he had at practice. So maybe in the few weeks he can get up to speed and move up in the depth chart. But it's going to be a big conversation to see who's second string, who truly is second string with these edge rushers. And I think Malcolm Kuntz and Deshaun Bauer made a huge case today. Sam Webb was the most impressive defensive back, and he's been making his case throughout this time through preseason. You saw the Raiders let go of Chris Jones, a veteran, for the UDFA Sam Webb, so maybe Sam Webb can make this 53-man roster. He's kind of competing with Amik Robertson for that fifth or sixth spot at the cornerback position. We already know we got Nate Hobbs, Rockison, Trayvon Mullen, Anthony Aver. That's four spots taken. Who's going to be the fifth cornerback? Amik Robertson competing and Sam Webb. You saw Amik Robertson come on a blitz, and I thought that was really special. You've seen him do this multiple times through preseason. Kind of shows the dynamic he brings, being a more of a physical cornerback, despite being one of the shorter guys and playing that slot cornerback position but Sam Webb 85 PFF grade targeted about eight times on the night but only allowed five catches for 34 yards that's really impressive stuff along with a pass deflection and only one reception that Sam Webb led up led to a first down so this guy has really held his own for a backup outside cornerback position and if I was you know Dave Ziegler Josh McDaniels I'd definitely be thinking hey what can we get out of Sam Webb and should this guy really make this 53 man roster and when you're talking about the quarterbacks of this team obviously Jared Sidham is a solidified number two quarterback. Chase Garbers looked decent out there. He had that deep play to Tyron Johnson and you heard Rich Gannon and the announcers talking about it and it was clear as day that that ball hung in the air too long and if you would have hit Tyron Johnson in stride, bro would have went for a touchdown for sure. So I don't know what's going to happen with Chase Garbers. I'm thinking more practice squad but he would be an interesting long-term project because the guy could move with his legs but look, if I'm the Raiders I got a lot of people that I want to keep in different areas of this team. I, I got a lot of spots on this roster that I need to still determine you know who's the best who's the best and who's the best backup too and I'm really comfortable with what I have at quarterback in Derek Carr in Jared Stidham and if Derek Carr and Jared Stidham ever go down unfortunately and most likely this season's a wash so if I'm the Raiders I'm only keeping two quarterbacks on this roster and I think that's going to be the decision for this final 53. When it comes to the running backs we know in the past the Patriots have kept five running backs on the roster in addition to a fullback so actually six backs in total when you look at last year. Ramondre Stevenson, Damian Harris, Brandon Bolden, J.J. Taylor, and also James White. All these guys are on the roster week one. Who knows what the Raiders are going to do? When you're looking at the odd people out, when you're, when you're looking at the running back position, it's not going to be Zamir White. It's not going to be Josh Jacobs. It's not going to be Brandon Bolden. Surprisingly, it was Kenyon Drake. And by the way, Kenyon Drake has been sending a lot of love saying, hey, the Raiders look great. Oh, look at the Raiders second team dominating some folks. So give a shout out to Kenyon Drake, not being salty, and still supporting 
supporting the Las Vegas Raiders and supporting some of these other running backs who are playing and now have an opportunity with the Raiders this year. So it's going to be Jacobs. It's going to be Brandon Bolden. It's going to be Zamir White. And then you did not see Amir Abdullah in the past two preseason games, and he is healthy. What does that tell me? That tell me that this guy is also a lock to make this team. So you got your four backs there. Question is, will the Raiders with Austin Walter, Britton Brown, will they reserve that fifth running back spot? Will they have five running backs on the roster to have Britton Brown, to keep him there so nobody plucks him? Or or are they going to practice squad protect him? It's going to be a little tricky. I think the Raiders have future plans with Britton Brown, the former UCLA running back, because he has that amazing rookie contract and he looked like he could run with the rest of them. So why not develop this guy? Who knows what he can possibly do in year two of his career next year. And when you're looking at the receiving game, the biggest play of the night was Tyron Johnson. The story of the wide receivers really is DJ Turner, Tyron Johnson, Keelan Cole. These three guys, this is who you're thinking about because when you're looking at the wide receiver room, you know Devontae, Mac Hollins, Hunter Renfro, these guys are a lock, right? And the Raiders will probably only keep five wide receivers. So between these three guys, who are the two extra that are, that are going to fill this role? I was really surprised and a lot of other people were shocked to see Keelan Cole out there after Tyron Johnson had already hit the bench, after DJ Turner had already hit the bench. And it was like, whoa, why is Keelan Cole out there? Why would you risk him getting hurt? Because I originally thought, man, this guy's the fourth man for sure, maybe third in the wide receiver room. Obviously, Matt Collins is probably the third, so the fourth. And now that's clearly not the case. Is the Raiders coaching staff thinking of advertising Keelan Cole to the rest of the league there, going to maybe release the guy and give him an opportunity to catch on to another team? They did this with Demarcus Robinson. Demarcus Robinson, they weren't necessarily saying, you know, he was, you know, the worst wide receiver out of the bunch that they had, but they had plans for some younger guys and they wanted to release Demarcus Robinson and give him an opportunity to go and play with the Ravens where he'll probably get a significant amount of opportunity with the Ravens there. Tyron Johnson, I think, is more of a lock than all these guys because he has this speed dynamic, something that no other wide receiver on the roster has right now. So I think he is your fourth wide receiver and DJ Turner. He gives you something in kick return, gives you something in punt return in addition to being a solid wide receiver. Maybe he can edge out Keelan Cole due to that dynamic. And obviously a huge conversation for this team is this offensive line and mainly the right side of the offensive line. You saw Jeremy Fowler say the Raiders have question marks with the whole entire right side. It's not just right tackles. So Lester Cotton was also a conversation to be had in this previous game. But Lester Cotton did do well in this game, giving up zero pressures and had a 90 PFF grade on only 14 snaps though. When you're looking at people who did not do too well, you're thinking of Bam Olesini and Alex Leatherwood. Bam Olesini and Alex Leatherwood came in sort of, you know, second, third quarter-ish really with the backups and even Alex Leatherwood still struggling, giving up the most pressures of any offensive lineman in this game for the Raiders. Five pressures that Alex Leatherwood give up, one sack and four QB hurries. Bam Olesini was right behind him, giving up four pressures, two QB hurries and even a QB hit as well. Illuminor came after that, 14 snaps, gave up two pressures. So, you know, Alex Leatherwood pay, played 47 snaps compared to Illuminor's 14 snaps. So maybe you would have still seen some problems if Illuminor would have stayed in the game a little bit longer. The only positive about Illuminor is he was going up against better talent. He was going up against players like Matthew Judon and had to hold his own against them. And he, and he gave up two pressures in that process. I really do think the Raiders still have a question mark at right tackle unless he can develop. I will say, I did not see too many negative plays from Jermaine Illuminor, but it was a, a, a lot of neutral, a lot of neutral, I guess I would say, when I was looking at some of his footage and trying to focus on exactly what he was doing in the in this previous game. So who knows if the Raiders are going to make a play for a right tackle. I think Lester Cotton Sr. probably showed some stability last night at guard, showing that he could handle the job. And this guy has played every single game in preseason. So Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler, and Coach Priscilla trying to figure out what they have in live reps with Lester Cotton. And you saw Derek Carr speak positively about him in a press conference. So hopefully there's some good things to come for him. I just think right tackle, e even with Jermaine Illuminor, still a question mark. And maybe the Raiders will try to address this once cuts happen. Other teams are going to be cutting players all around the league. We're going to be cutting players as well. But that means there's going to be more players available in free agency that we could possibly sign. So let me know what you think the Raiders should do. Like this video if you haven't already and subscribe to the Raiders Rundown for more Raiders content. My name is Wi-Fi Willie. Peace out, and I hope you have a good one.